Heat flow induced by nuclear disposal storage along rock mass. This problem consists of a disposal storage which provides heat flow within the middle of the rock mass formation. GD interface is a general pre and pro post processor which has to be customized for a specific finite element program. The customization for coded write version is imported by the command data problem type coded write. Once coded write has been selected as the current interface, all the parameters necessary to carry out the analysis are available within the data tab located at the drop down menu. The data tab contains the conditions, material, interval data, and problem data concept scheme. In order to carry out a simulation, it is necessary to follow the next steps. Define geometry, define attributes and conditions, generate mesh, calculate, and then you view the results. In this example, the geometry is composed by a square planar surface representing the rock host, a circular bentonite buffer, and a circular heat source or canister in which the initial conditions, materials, and mesh will be assigned. To define the rock host geometry, click on the Geometry tab, select Create Stride Line, or you can click on this Create a Stride Line icon. In the message box appears enter point to define line. Press escape to leave. Then type the coordinates of each point and press enter to introduce it. In this case 0, 0, 0, 60, 60, 60. 60,0 and 0, 0,0. After entering this last point, click on the Join option in order to close the quadrilateral perimeter. Now press Escape in order to leave the line creation. Click on the Zoom Frame icon to view the entire geometry. To define the buffer zone and the canister geometries, we are going to draw arcs using a grid. First of all, click on the grid icon. Then, make a right click on top of the grid icon and select Settings. Verify that the grid tab option from the drop down menu has been selected. Check mark, show grid lines and activate snap boxes. Now we are going to establish the distance between grid lines in the X and Y directions. Set the X and Y spacing values, values equal to 0 0.5. Set the measure line every equal to 1. Press the Accept button. For practical purposes, check mark the Draw Axis option in order to display the origin 0, 0,0 on the grid. Since the buffer zone or bentonite comprises a circular area with a diameter of 6 meters within the center of the rock mass, it's necessary to create two arcs with a radius of 3 meters. In order to have a closer view, zoom in using the mouse scroll. Now select Geometry, Create, Arc from the drop down menu. Or click Create Arc icon in the toolbar. Now, in order to Draw the arcs, move the cursor 
on top of the coordinate 30, 27 and click left click on that point you can see the coordinates on the bottom on the right side of the screen after that move the cursor near the 27, 30 coordinates and click then do the same in the 30, 33 coordinates and the first arc of 3 meter radius will be drawn To continue, move the cursor near the 30, 27 coordinates and click. Click on the shine option in order to connect both arcs. Now Move the cursor near the 33, 30 coordinates, click, and move the cursor near the 30, 33 coordinates, and click again. A second arc is drawn, and a, th a circular area has been created. Click shine again in order to join the, the circular perimeter. Press escape. Now we are going to repeat this process for the construction of the canister. The difference is that the canister has a diameter of one meter. So it's necessary to create two arcs with a radius of 0 0.5 meters. Select geometry, create arc from the drop down menu move the cursor on top of the coordinate 30, 29.5, click, then move the cursor near the 29.5, 30 coordinates, click again, and finish the first arc on the 30, 30.5 coordinates, and click. The first arc is drawn. Now move the cursor near the 30, 29.5 coordinates, click, click on the shine option in order to connect both arcs. Move the cursor near 30.5, 30 coordinates, click and move the cursor near 30, 30.5 coordinates and click again. Click shine in order to close the perimeter and the second circle is done. Press escape in order to leave the arc creation mode. Now, now we have the geometry finished. You can click on the zoom frame icon to view the entire geometry and on the grid icon to disable the grid. Now to define the host rock surface, select geometry, create NURBS surface by contour. Select the outer and inner contours of the host rock. When selected, the lines turn red and press escape. The surface generated is represented by a fuchsia square and a fuchsia circle. 
Now press escape in order to leave the NARP surface creation mode. Make a right click on the graphical area and select Level, All In, Line in order to level the lines and the arcs in the geometry. To define the buffer zone or bentonite surface, select Geometry, Create Nerve Surface by Contour. Click on the arcs 5, 6, 7 and 8, which rep represent the bentonite zone around the canister. The lines turn red when selected and press escape. The surface generated is represented by a fuchsia outer and inner circles. Press escape to leave the surface creation. And now we have all the surface of this problem created. In this problem, the canister has no surface defined since it's the heat source and is represented only by lines or wall arcs. You can click on the zoom frame icon in order to have a, an entire view of the geometry and to visualize the information of any geometry entity select utilities list lines the point to be visualized is selected in the same way as explained for the lines during the surface creation this is by clicking on the interesting line with the left mouse button Press escape and the list entities dialog box is shown. You can select multiple lines. Here you will find uh, all the information of each geometry entity. Click close to live. To save the work done until now, select the file drop down menu, click on the save icon. Then select the directory where you want to save the, the project. Type the project's name and click save. Shield generates a dot sheet directory that's the project file. It's time to define the attributes and conditions. Let's define a problem data. Select data, problem data, problem data. The problem data windows allows the user to enter all the general data which Codebrite requ requires to perform a simulation. This data includes all the data that's not related to a geometrical entity or to a time interval. Type an appropriate title for the problem. For example, thermo example or thermo tutorial. Choose full execution from the execution drop down arrow menu. Choose no backup from the backup arrow drop down menu.
since the simulation represents only two phases, it's not necessary to, pr to save the previous analysis. Choose no in the axisymmetry field because this problem is not axisymmetric. Type 0 on the x and y gravity component and leave the default value in the zeta gravity component. Click accept to modify the changes and click on equation solve to define these parameters. In this menu you select the equations to be solved in this problem. This simulation involves a pure thermical problem considering heat flow. So check the box besides energy balance and no temperature. Leave the, the rest of the boxes blank and the values by default. The solution strategy contains a parameter which defines the strategy used to achieve the solutions of the simulation. Select the solution strategy tab, type 1 on the epsilon box, 1 on the theta box, 0 on the time step control, type 10 on the max number of iterations per time step. Select iterative sparse plus CCS from the solver type drop down menu. Select average nodal relative permeabilities from the elemental rel relative permeability computed from drop down menu and use one exponential minus six for max house temp one exponential minus eight for max node energy mass bulb and one exponential minus two for temp iter core use the default option on nodal correction or residual for convergence criterion, drop down error menu. Click accept to save the changes. To define the output, select the output tab from the problem data window. Select all for write numerical process information. Type 20 on the writing frequency edit box. The write piezometric head in additional file checkbox option is not required for the simulation since it's used for problem solving water mass balance equation. Select Gauss points on the output points drop down menu and check the write all information box. By selecting this option, all the information will be saved under one common file. Therefore, select outputs is not necessary for this type of problem. Click accept to save the changes and close to leave the problem data window. Now let's define materials. Go to data materials. Materials property include the mechanical data of soils, hydraulic and thermal data, faith property and construction excavation. Click on new material. A new material dialog window will appear. Type the new material's name, in this case rock. Press OK. Now we are going to insert the properties of each material. Choose hydraulic and thermal data tab 
and click on any button which appear beside conducting flux of, of heat one. Then the boxes appear and you can edit them. The field ITYCL contains a flag to define the type of relation considered for the constitutive law and the fields P1 to P10 contain the parameters of the relation. All the fields depend on the constitutive law and are listed in the chapter of the Code Bright Manual. In condu conductive flux of heat 1, type 1, on the ITYCL edit box, type 3 on the P1 box, type 3 on P2 box, and that's it for these variables. Now choose Face Properties tab menu, click on any button beside Solid Face Properties, tab 1 on the ITYCL box, type 800 on the P1 box and 2500 on the P2 box. The material must be assigned over a geometrical entity. This can be a line, volume, surface. In this simulation we are going to assign to the corresponding rock host geometry which consists in a surface. To do that, click on the Assign button, select Surface, and a data change window will appear. You should click Yes in order to save the changes done to the new material. The cursor turns from an arrow into square and now it's time to select the surface. Click on the fuchsia square. It will change to into red color. And now click on finish and in the message message box will appear assigned one new entity to material rock. You can draw the materials in order to visualize in the geometry which materials have been assigned. To do that, click on Draw, Rock. You can always unassign the material using the unassign button. Once the rock formation has been defined, it's necessary to define the bentonite. In order to do so, click on New Material, type Bentonite on the New Materials window, click OK, and now define the parameters for the bentonite. We can see the, all the materials. So let's go to hydraulic and thermal data. Click on any button beside conductive flux of heat one. Type one on the edit box below ITYCL. Type 1.5 on the edit box below P1. Type 1.5 on the edit box below P2. And now the conducting flux of heat 1 is defined. Go to Face Properties, Tab Menu.
click on solid face properties type one on the ITYCL box a southland on the P1 box two southland on the P2 box and now it's time to assign it to the bentonite surface click on the same button select surface click yes on the save modification of material window and the cursor turns into a square select the fuchsia inner circle when selected it turns into red and click finish now the bentonite is assigned to the corresponding geometry the message assign one new entities to material bentonite appears in the message box by clicking draw bentonite you will visualize in the geometry the material bentonite assigned to the corresponding geometry you can always unassign a material using the unassign button click on finish you can also use all materials in the draw button to view all materials assigned to the geometry not only the bentonite click finish to leave the window to assign conditions go to data conditions conditions include all the properties excluding materials which can be assigned in the geometrical entities there are four main types of conditions force displacement boundary conditions flux boundary conditions initial unknowns time evolution anchor there are two conditions for this simulation. These two are initial unknowns, surface temperature condition, and flux boundary conditions. Click on the line icon, choose the option flux boundary condition, select boundary flow rate from the from the flow rate drop down menu. Type 25 on prescribed temperature. This value corresponds to a uniform temperature along the host rock boundary. Type 100 on gamma for heat edit box and left the values for all the other boxes by default. Click on the assign button and select lines 1 two, three, and four. These four lines correspond to the host rock boundaries. Click finish and assign four new lines to conditions line flux BC will appear in the message box. By clicking draw flux BC, you can visualize the conditions applied represented by a red cross inside a circle. Any condition can be unassigned using the unassigned button. To define conditions for the canister, click on the line icon, choose the option Flux BC from the drop down menu. Find that all the default values are zero, if not, because we inserted a previous condition before erase the value and restore the zero default value now select boundary flow rate from the flow rate drop down menu and type 200 on the prescribed 
uh, heat flow edit box. Click on the send button. The cursor turns into a square. Select arcs seven and eight and click finish. Assign two new lines to conditions. Line flux BC appears in the message box. By clicking draw flux BC, you can visualize the conditions applied. You can unassign conditions using an assign button and choose flux BC from entities drop down menu. Now all assign conditions of type flux BC for each line are summarized on the flux BC dialog box. There you can visualize every parameter entered as a flux BC condition in the same order that in the window. Click close and close the condition window. It's always a good idea to save your work every once in a while in case you have any problem. To define the initial unknowns, go to Data Conditions, click on the Surface icon, choose Initial Unknowns from the drop down menu, choose Constant from the distribution menu, type the value of 25 Celsius degrees for the temper temperature field, click Assign and apply the condition over the surface one, the Fuchsia square. Once selected, the square turns into red, click Finish. And now it's time to enter the initial unknown for the bentonite, the second surface. Click on the surface icon, we'll open the data conditions window, surface, click on the surface icon, select initial unknowns from the drop down menu. Select constant for from the distribution menu and type the value 20 for the temperature edit box. Click assign and apply the condition over the surface to the Fuchsia inner circle. When selecting the inner circle, the Fuchsia turns into red, then click finish and a message telling you that the service has been assigned appeared. To define interval data, go to data interval data. The first time interval comprises all the data entered until now, including the defined problem data, material and conditions. In simulations where transitory problems may occur and changes of boundary conditions take place with time, it's necessary to define several time intervals. Now, select ERs from the Units of Time Discretization drop-down menu. Type 100 on the final time and period field and left the other options with the default values of zero. Click up Accept and then click Close. The message Interval Data Modified appears blinking after clicking Accept. Mesh generation consists in discretized the geometry into nodes and elements. Conditions and materials assigned to the geometrical entities are transferred during this process to the nodes and elements. 
In this example, an unstructured mesh has been used, which is composed by triangular linear elements. The mesh transition is controlled by the size ratio between adjacent elements of different size. In order to modify the fault value for the size ratio, select Utility Preferences, then select Meshing from the tab menu, in the unstructured size transitions box, verify that the corresponding value is 0 0.6. If not, move the cursor to that value. Click Accept and then click Close. Mesh density can be adjusted by controlling the element sites at different parts of the geometry. The parameter which controls the triangular triangular element size is the average length of its size. This parameter can be defined over each geometrical entity of the problem. In this case, uh, let us assign an element size parameter value of 5 meters for the rock house surface and 1 meter for the bentonite or buffer zone. So choose mesh and structure, assign size on surface from the drop down menu Enter a size to a single surface will appear, type 0 0.5. This value of 0 0.5 will be assigned over surface 2. Click on the assign button. The cursor turns into a square. Click on the surface 2, the inner circle. The fuchsia turns into red. Now press escape and the same window under size to assign to lines will appear again. Now enter 5 on the edit box. This value of 5 meters will be assigned over surface 1. Click assign. The arrow turns into a square and select the fuchsia square. Press escape. The same window will appear again. This time press close. And now go to Mesh, Generate Mesh from the drop down menu. Following an enter size of elements to be generated window will appear. Type 5 on the edit box and click OK. Now a dialog notifying that the mesh has been created appears. The, the, this dialog describes mesh characteristics as triangle, the number of nodes and the number of triangle elements. Click View Mesh to see the generated mesh. Note how the mesh generated on the bent on its surface is more concentrated than the one on the rock host surface. With all the parameters previously defined, the generated mesh has the following properties. The length of the triangle sides in the bentonite is equal to half a meter, 0 0.5 meters. The length of the side of triangles in the rock host is equal to 5 meters. And the average length of the sides of the triangles far from the heater is equal to 5 meters. If you select Utilities Status, a window summarizing the mesh characteristics will appear. Here you can find all the information about the mesh. By selecting View Level All from the drop down menu, the nodes and elements numer numeration appear on the finite element mesh. To process data calculation, choose Calculate, Calculate from the drop down menu. Then Codebrite will launch the process. When finished, a dialog window appears notifying you that the process has finished. To access the post process interface, click on the post process button. Or click OK and then click on the post process icon. This icon toggles between the pre and post process interface. 
The post-process interface contains many features, but here I will present you only some of the most common. Select View Results from the Window drop-down menu. A View Results and Deformation window will appear. Select Counter Fill from the View drop-down menu. And then select Temperature and click Apply. This will uh, show the temperature result on the screen. The maximum and the minimum are displayed in the message box. On the right you have a color scale indicating the values for each color. This result is for a step of a hundred in the time units we have indicated when introducing the interval data. If you want to view the results for another time step, just select it from the drop down menu. You can always zoom in to have a better appreciation of the graph. Just uh, we like working with a CAD interface. Now close the current window and let's go to Window View Style and the Select and Display Style window appear. Let uh, these uh, options let you modify some of the uh, graph interface features. We're going to select body from the style drop down menu. I have already selected this option but if you haven't uh, the grid triangles will disappear. To generate a line graph click on the graph icon then click on the line graph icon and then select temperature for this case to generate a temperature versus distance line graph. Select the start point of the line graph by clicking in the graph interface on the entire point and select the final point of the line graph by the same way. And the line graph temperature versus distance appears. You will see temperature on the y axis and distance in the x axis. And different colors for the different materials assigned to different surface. Now click close and let's generate a point evolution graph. You can click on the graph icon that we used before to create the line graph uh, distance temperature versus distance and then uh, click on the point evolution icon or Select View Results, drop down menu, Graphs, Point Evolution, Temperature. In this case, because we want, we are going to to generate a temperature point evolution graph. Now, click on the the zone where you want the the point evolution graph. In this case, we are going to select the bentonite zone, zone. And we are going to start selecting points from the bentonite area going outside to the rock host. After selecting all the points you are interested in, press escape and the point evolution graphs will appear. You'll find temperature on the y-axis and the time steps on the x-axis. In this case it displays distance because we can see that the previous graph done is, is shown here but the point evolution graphs are temperature versus time graph. So that's it for this tutorial.
So to quit, click close on this window and go to file quit 